Hi, I'm Sam Dillard with Influx Data. I'm a product manager here. And I'm Zoe Steinkamp. I'm a developer advocate at Influx Data. And today we're going to be talking about alerts. And in InfluxDB, that manifests as checks and notifications. So Zoe, first things first, what is a check? So a check is a query that assigns a status to the data, which is just to preface for that. Checks are different than notifications, although they are used together they are separated, not only in our UI, but just in, in theory as well, which I'm gonna go into a little bit more, but first we're gonna go over our two main check options, which are threshold and dead man. Right on, so what's a threshold? So a threshold check would be the one that you would use continuously as your data streams in. So with this, we have four statuses you can assign to your check. You can choose the okay, which means that the data is within the threshold you would expect, which means also, just to clarify, with a threshold check, it's either below, above, or in between a data set. So with this one, these are the ideal parameters. That's the OK. The info means that it's not in the ideal parameters that you're looking for, but it's not necessarily an emergency concern. It just is more like, why is it doing that kind of question? And then the warn and the critical are the two main parts, especially when used with the notification system, because these allow people to be alerted of issues. So the warning is for when the data is a little bit concerning, you definitely want to know about it, but it's not an emergency. You're not about to like go run and put out a fire yet. The critical means something is 100% not right. We're very, very concerned and we want to be notified immediately that something's wrong. And so those would be the main components of the threshold check. Okay, cool. And as scary as a term as it might be, what is a dead man check? So a dead man check is actually kind of scary even when it's activated because it does mean that the source of the data is considered dead. It's just no longer sending data in for whatever reason that might be. And in this beautiful drawing, I went ahead and showed, as you can see, the data is coming in and then it just kind of drops off abruptly. So what the dead man check will then do is if how often it's set to run, if this one is set for 10 minutes later, it will be alerted that there's no data coming in and it's very upset about this. And it can set the status to any of these four, though I would say that most people are putting it to warn or critical because normally if there's no data coming in, it's not really okay and it's not really info per se as much as it's just not great. So that is what the dead man check is used for. And it is a one-time one deal kind of thing. You don't set a dead man check to run continuously per se like this one does. It runs, it sets the status to critical, and then it's done running because there's no data to look for anymore. Right, people don't want noise. Exactly, it's a one-time thing where it's letting you know and then there's no more noise after. Whereas this one obviously can be a little bit more noisy, but in a good way because you can as I'll later on explain, you can set up your notifications to only notify when the status is at warn or critical. And these can just be, the info and the okay can just be something that you check up on, but not necessarily get alerts about. Very cool, okay, so let me boil this down real quick. A threshold check monitors the underlying data and evaluates it and sets these levels, essentially. And a dead man check checks for the existence of data. Is that right? That is completely correct. And now we can start to go into some of the options that come with configuring these types of checks and configuring our notifications. Right on, so what kind of options do we have? Yeah, so when you are making a check, you're going to have a few different options for how you set it up. So the first thing you're gonna to need to pick is how often you'd like your check to run. Now, just to keep in mind, your check is separate, like I said before, from your notifications. So you can set it to run as pretty much often as you would like or as needed, pretty much, as I would like to say. So we have quite a wide variety of options. I would say we go all the way down to a second, all the way up to 30 days and pretty much every time slot in between. We also have an option for you to do an offset as well. And an offset is for when you expect your data to be, I guess you could call it laggy, just a little bit behind, so you just want your check to wait just a little bit longer to run. And yes, you could originally just put the offset in, but some people like to have it separate just so they know in the future as to why they put that in. You know, a coworker might not understand that you have set it to five minutes when in their mind the data shows up in three and that offset is a reminder of, no, we are, we're waiting on purpose, basically. But that's the first thing you're going to set up. And then you're gonna move on to the next step, which is the actual message. And you will have the option for the message for the notification as well. So when you're setting up the message in the check, you're going to have a few options that you can change. 
their customizable functions or customizable values. We also do include the function as well. But you can change the name to be the check name. You can have the level, which is the actual data that triggered the check. So for example, if a CPU spiked, that high spike that reached the critical, that would be the level that you would want to see. And then we have some functions, which we would go into deeper in a different video, but those are like flux options, et cetera. You could say things like, if the CPU is at this level, what is the GPU at, basically? You could mm. ask for those kind of parameters. From there, we have our notifications. You read my mind. We, uh, we've talked about checks up until now. So maybe start off just at the high level, what is a notification? Yeah, so the notification has two pieces to it. It has the notification endpoint and the notification rules. So the notification endpoint is where you can choose to send your data onward. So I've put some examples here, like Slack or HTTP or the more, I would say the very popular one would be pager duty for actual alerting. And with this one, we're mainly just gonna be asking you a few details about obviously like your pager duty or possibly like URL or something like that. That's just the setup. That's not like you are not done just because you've set this up. Then you have to go on to the notification rules. And the rules are actually what say when the notification will send you something through that endpoint. So for example, you can do it to be when a status is equal to, so when the status is equal to critical, please send me a notification, or when the status goes from okay to warning, please send me a notification. And those are the two triggers that we have to actually send out an alert to you. And that's really important to know because you can run checks without even setting up a notification if you desire. It can be kind of like a logging system almost, and you can pretty much go on to the InfluxDB Cloud UI and get a, get a holistic view of all your checks. You can see if for the most part your data is sitting in the OK status or it, for some reason every single day at 5 p.m. it goes to critical. That would be very important to know, but you might not necessarily need a notification for it. But if you do, that's why we have our notification system. And one thing I do want to mention here is that notifications are set up very similarly to checks in their options. So you're going to be able to change the amount of time they run to. So you can have your checks run every five minutes, but have your notifications run every hour. And you can also, like I said before, customize the message that is inside of your notifications. You can change the name, the level, and the function. Okay, very good. So let me summarize this a little bit and you tell me if I have it right. So with checks, whether it's threshold or dead man, I'm making some evaluation on underlying data. I'm creating a data set of statuses. With notifications, it's kind of like a query on top of that that monitors that data set that was created by the checks and does some action based on what it saw there. Yes, that is exactly correct. And just to clarify on that, the notification does take an action. The action that it takes is to send out a notification. And you'll also have messages as an option as well for your checks. And with this, you can change a few different values, mainly being name, which is the name of the check, the level, which is the data that activated this check in the first place. So if it reaches a critical, that's going to be that data point, that amount. And then finally, functions, which can just make your checks messages a little bit more advanced. Cool, thanks, Zoe. So there you have it. That's the checks and notification system with InfluxDB. Hopefully that was helpful and can't wait to see what you build with it.